Hello everyone, I'm Ash and welcome into another tactics video here on FIFA 23. This is a series where I'll show you how to recreate real systems in game. Today I've got a really exciting one for you. This is going to be a fun one. It is Roberto De Zerbi's Brighton Tactics. Really enjoyed playing with this system. I can't wait to share this one with you guys. Um, and today we're going to get into it. I'm going to show you how we can recreate it in game as accurately and as lifelike as possible. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome along mate sure to hit the subscribe button down below and ring the bell to get notifications every time i upload a video lots more tactics videos coming your way and if you want to see more on this tactic such as how it ranks compared to all of my other systems strengths weaknesses suitable teams to play out with the tactic and more you can find my tactics package on my Patreon. The link to that is down below. Not only can you get access to that, but you can also get access to uh, exclusive tactics videos that you won't find on YouTube, only on Patreon, uh, behind the scenes videos, early access to videos, access to my Football Manager 2023 tactics that I will be uploading very shortly, Discord server access, Fantasy Football League access, and a whole lot more as well. Also, do go and check out my video games podcast. The link to that is also down below. And with that being said, let's get into the system. So what do we have with this, uh, I guess, 4 2 3 one or 4 3, 3 system, whichever you prefer to call it? Well, you've got something that's extremely progressive, very free-flowing, heavy on stamina really heavy on stamina so please do bear that in mind you're going to have to rest in possession as much as you possibly can and if you are playing this in a career mode just make sure that you are regularly rotating and, and utilizing your subs bench as well particularly with that five sub rule so starting off with the positions we've gone for this 4-3-3 defend because that's the closest we can get here because what you're really looking for is you've got the two defensive midfielders and then you've got a camp uh, and then in this case, we want the wingers to be actual wingers rather than wide midfielders. So we want to push these guys up. Uh, in addition, make sure that you don't change the position of these, like to right and left defensive midfield, for example. Just keep them as they are uh, because we want them kind of taking on the centre. You don't need them kind of coming out into the wide area as much. Uh, and with that being said, we can get into the tactics. So let's begin with the defensive style. Starting off with this, we have constant pressure, relentless press. Very impressed with how they press. Not only are they looking to win the ball back after losing it, but whenever the uh, opposition will take short goalkeeper restarts, for example, they're straight on them. They're setting those traps and they are relentlessly trying to press the opposition and win the ball back. The width is on 40, supplements that press. And with that, it's got a more of a kind of, as it says there, a balanced shape to it. So you're going to leave a little bit more space in the, uh, I guess, central areas. But it does help the press, complements that to no end. The depth of the defensive line and the block overall is 70, giving you a high line. Something that I noticed very quickly when um, he did kind of join after, obviously, Graham Potter left, um, is that they really have pushed that block up. Um, and it's to help, obviously... Um, play into that relentless constant pressure that we are speaking about. So we've got a high block there. Uh, what do we have offensively then? Well, build-up play, we have it on slow build-up, allowing you to play short from goalkeeper restarts. You're going to get those defenders coming and dropping into the box. And then chance creation is forward runs, and that's what's going to allow you to have that high volume of movement that they are known for. Something they also did under Graham Potter, they've really retained that um, under the De Zerbi reign. Um, and as I sort of mentioned, this will drain stamina. Constant pressure and forward runs together, very, very heavy on stamina. So please do rest in possession as much as you possibly can. You'll see me doing it in the gameplay above me as well. Uh, kind of just kind of playing it around the defence for, for a couple of in-game minutes before going again. Um, and then kind of go from there as well. Just make sure it doesn't become that kind of end-to-end -end game. The width is on 70. They do a fantastic job of stretching the pitch out. Lots of space in between each players um, and each kind of vertical line, I guess. And this was really, really helpful. I found it's probably the first system which is still quite possession orientated, but really stretched the play out at least successfully with regards to recreating them in FIFA. Um, so that's something that just seemed to work really well, which obviously it doesn't usually, but in this case, uh, I found that it it was just very, very effective. Players in the box is on six, giving you three players in the box. Obviously, the two wingers and the striker as well. Lallana may sometimes get into there, but often when he does, it's because one of the wingers are the ones getting to the byline and then cutting it back. 
Uh, so that's something that you should just bear in mind as well. And then corners of free kicks, both of these are on four. Try to replicate their defensive piece. I notice that they like to crowd the keeper a lot. They like to get a lot of men in the six yard box. Um, for some, quite a lot of their set piece routines, but um, they don't work on FIFA. This, the the D-pad routines, they just don't work on set pieces. So unfortunately, you just have to go with this. So let's talk about the player instructions. And starting off with Sanchez in goal, we've got him on comes crosses and sweeper keeper as well. He is given license to take risks and it's something that he does like to do. To his detriment, occasionally, um, there have been times when they've sort of gone into kind of messy, sticky situations, but obviously a very good keeper and he's, he's very comfortable playing in this way so we've got him on sweeper keeper and also comes across as well uh, with the two center backs no need to change anything with Duncan Colwell in this case so we'll leave it there and then with the two full backs we've got Tariq Lamptey and Estu Pignan they've obviously rotated particularly at right back you've seen the likes of Veltman there um, who does kind of come on in later on in the game uh, you've seen Gross play there occasionally as well so they've rotated but generally the role stays the same both of the fullbacks are going to be on during the attack. But as you'll notice, their run types are on mixed because occasionally they will overlap. When the kind of winger on their side uh, gets a ball, they'll then drive inside and then the fullback will overlap. But often, let's say if the winger is positioned basically on the touchline, which we'll talk about more shortly, they're obviously going to create a lot of space in the half channels, in the half spaces. And that's when the likes of the fullbacks will then surge into that space instead. So they're really trying to interchange those two. And you'll notice it does a quite a good job of when you do get the ball with the winger and drive inside, they will then overlap and they'll recognise that. So that's, again, something that will just provide a little bit of versatility and balance to your attacks, particularly from the fullbacks. With the two uh, defensive midfielders in, starting off with Caicedo, we've got a couple of slightly differing roles. We've got them both on cut passing lanes to integrate that lane press and then attacking support change it a little bit Caicedo is on stay back while attacking whereas McAllister is on balanced he will kind of push up the field a little bit more now the personnel does change fairly often sometimes gross plays in the middle obviously you've got Caicedo and you've got McAllister as well we've also seen Billy Gilmore occasionally play there um, so the personnel does change a little bit and it does ultimately depend on that um, so Generally, with McAllister, that's when you want it on balanced attack. You might have it, a, same with Gross as well, you might have a little bit different if you've got the likes of Caicedo and Gilmer on there. Perhaps they're both going to stay back more and play that out-and-out out double pivot. But with McAllister, is someone that you want just pushing up a little bit further, but not too far, um, because they still do kind of play that role as the kind of protectors and the ones whose possession will rest on as well. Uh, let's talk about the defensive positioning. Both of these guys are on cover wing. They're going to fill in for the fullbacks who will generally join the attack. Um, and then with the positioning freedom, Caicedo is on deep line playmaker. That's going to enable him to drop around into lots of different pockets and help you progress possession from the defence into the midfield and further on. But then with McAllister, a little bit different. We've got him on drift wide. He likes to kind of make those rock one runs into the wide areas of the pitch particularly on this right hand side and it just helps to kind of build up in that area on that side particularly in this case on that right side which we do have him positioned with there with Lalana in central attacking midfield very very obvious these ones we've got him on comeback on defense to get him tracking back and his support and crosses is on balanced as we've spoken about earlier he will sometimes get into the box when the likes of the wingers are cutting it back from the byline, etc. But he's not constantly doing that. It is only sometimes, otherwise he plays that more of that advanced pivot role. With the two wingers, we've got Matoma and March in this case. Both of these guys are on the same instructions. They're on comeback on defence, again getting them to track back. And then their chance creation is on stay wide. As we've spoken about, these guys are going to provide the width of the pitch. They're going to stay close to the touchline. And then they'll look to kind of drive inside when they get the ball, when the land Angelil runs as well, which they make a lot of. As we see there, we've getting behind. They're going to penetrate the bat line very, very often, particularly on forward runs. Finally, their support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross. Let's talk about the striker. Then we've got Ferguson in this case, obviously only 59 rated, and that was a little bit of an issue playing with him in the game. Um, but the role does stay the same generally. Support runs is on stay central, playing the role of that focal point. No need to get him drifting out wide much because. Ultimately, you've got a lot of movement in those areas anyway. And then attacking runs is also on getting behind. Again, giving you more of that mobility and that versatile attacking um, kind of patterns because of that 
high level of movement. And then defensive support is on stay forward. So with that being said, we're just about ready to round it off there. A really fun system. I hope you guys enjoy playing with it too. Obviously, very draining on stamina as we've already spoken about, but one that um, I still think you can get a, a lot of fun out of. I think the best thing to do with this is really to add a defensive game plan where you take off, let's say, forward runs and add possession, or you take off constant pressure and put it on maybe press after possession loss or press up press of the heavy touch as well and that will just allow you if you are winning in games to step off the boil just a little bit and just recover a little bit more stamina so that's something that i would personally advise you guys to do if you are playing with this in a career mode right then with that being said we're going to round it off there make sure to check out my patreon if you want to see how this ranks compared to all my other tactics and suitable teams to play as strengths and weaknesses as well as a whole host of other perks as well and also check out my gaming podcast the links are all down below i think you guys will really enjoy that just an episode where we talk about our most anticipated games for 2023 so please do go and check that out subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and ring the bell to get notifications every time i upload give me a follow on twitter uh, the link to that is in the description. And with that being said, we're going to finish it there. Thank you so much for watching. We're now going to go into some gameplay. So until the next one, I will see you soon.